Zero Accounting Software 2023 Budgeted Income Statement Data Input. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation. That's Get Great Guitars. We're going to duplicate the tabs to put the reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top so we can duplicate it. Right click in the tab up top so we can duplicate it. Back to the tab to the middle. Accounting drop down. Open in the balance sheet. This is a comparative balance sheet if you don't have it. Open the standard one. Tab into the right, accounting to the drop down, income to the statement. This is a comparative income statement. If you don't have it, you can open the standard one there as well. In prior presentation, we have downloaded information from zero, basically a trial balance that we can then format into an income statement and then create a budgeted projective income statement in Excel, which we have done here. Now what we would like to do is take that budgeted income statement and put it back into zero using the budgeting tool, which is different than the normal data input process because of course we're projecting out into the future. The reason we want to do that is because we want to be able to run reports within zero that can do comparative reports. So as time passes, say we budgeted in the past and we budgeted for January and February, I can then run reports to compare what we thought was going to happen to what actually happened as time passes. That's one of the great tools to have zero, to have to, to put it back into zero so that we can have that information. Now, we have inputted into the zero system two months of data input for actual data input for January and February. We used that as the baseline to then create our budget. And we kind of imagined that this is information from the prior two months, December and November of the prior year, so that we can budget out project starting in January. So the reason we want to do that is now that I have January and February, I'm going to put that into the system as well as all 12 months and we'll be able to run reports which will show the actual and budget for January and February and then everything going forward from that uh, we don't have any actual data to but in practice of course as time passes we can compare what actually happens to the budget. All right, let's go to the first tab and see where the data input for the budget is. It's under the accounting drop down. We go into the reports and then we're going to go on down, move on down to the budget manager, the budget manager. Now you could uh, have multiple budgets if you wanted to. This is the overall budget, kind of the default budget. You can add a new budget uh, if you if you so choose and simply name the budget here. We're just going to use the overall budget and we're going to start it on January. So you could have different start dates if you wanted to. Uh, it's, you know, the common budget is to project out, you know, on a 12 month basis, but you can, you know, do different variations as you choose. And then we've got the actuals. So this is showing the actual numbers down here, which could be useful if you were trying to construct your budget, you know, within zero. But that's not what we recommend doing really and that's not what we did here what we did is we exported to excel to construct the budget and now i just want to do the data input so what i would like to see is no actuals i'm going to say none and update so so now we just have our data input fields down below and then the periods we could have three months six months 12 months 24 months we're going to add a year's worth of budget so we're going to go for 12 months out and there's our budget information now zero has a nice tool down here that we could import the budget so if i look at the import option uh note that i could like download the template here and say give me the template in excel or a csv file and we could open this and populate it now you could try to use this template as your budgeting uh tool instead of building it uh, like we did here, but it would still be a little bit difficult to do because you'd probably start off with your past data. But also I could, it might be a little bit faster if I take, if I was to take my data here and just copy and paste it into the template uh, and then import the template. So that's just a method that you might want to keep in mind. We're not going to do it that way here because I want to see how to actually put the data input into zero without the template but that could be a, a useful tool to save some time. 
So I'm going to go back on over. I'm going to go back to the budget manager here, and we're just going to do the data input. Down here, we've got the import. Uh, we've got the exporting, saving, uh, and the cancel. This is in like the non-widescreen. It might be easiest if we go to widescreen once you're ready to do the data input, and that gives you just a little bit more space uh, here so that you could see a little bit further out to the right. It kind of locks in the screen. All right, so let's just try to do this one line at a time. It's a lot easier if you had, uh, if you had like two screens that you could use, but we'll just we'll work with what we've got here, right? So we've got the sales number. Now we've got the account number over here that could be a little bit useful. Sales number, uh, twenty nine two two six. So I'm going to say, all right, sales uh, twenty nine two two six two nine two two six. That's account four three five zero, right? Now I want to count, hold on a second. I'm going to make this whole thing green. I want to count 4,000, 4,000. Yeah, 49226, 49226. Now if I hit this green button in the middle, it gives me my compounding options. So I can apply a fixed amount to each, uh, each month. Uh, if I want to just copy it across, I can adjust by an amount each month, or I can adjust by percentage each month. So what I want to do is adjust by that percentage, because that's what we did here. We've increased it uh, by 10%, so 110%. So I'm going to say adjust by percent each month, and I'm going to say, and I'm not sure if I put 110 or just 10%. I'm going to say 10% and see what it does there. I'm going to say copy it across. And so the next month should be 32,149. Boom, looks good. This, the total comes out to 624,982. So 624,982, 624,996. Slightly different. What happened? Well, maybe it's just a rounding difference. It looks immaterial. Let's keep it. Let's keep it rolling. I think that's good. So we'll go to the next one. Uh, service. Let's go and highlight this one. Uh, this is account 4300-4250. So 4300, back to January, data input 4250. All right. And then this one, we increased by just a solid amount of $1,000. So I'm just going to say, let's go to the arrow. And I want to adjust by an amount of just $1,000 bring it up by a thousand dollars each uh, time period and apply it out so boom and that comes out to a total of one one seven oh 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 one one seven oh 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 let's see if that is what we have here yeah looks good movie b to the n next one ultra base we're gonna say this one goes up by five percent rental income Count four three five zero one one three zero, rental income. Uh, uh, hold on, a second. Wait a second. I put this one in the wrong box. I knew it. I knew I did something funny. There. Uh, uh, it should that should be the service item. The whole thing. The whole thing is messed up. No, it's not. Stay calm. Stay calm. What I'll do is I'll put this one here, 4250. And then uh, that 4250 was increased by the 1000. Okay, I see what I did. I see what I did. So we'll put the 1000 here and then apply. So I fixed it to this one. And then this one.